Welcome back everybody to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most fundamental questions since the beginning of time. Does size matter? Of course it matters, especially in gemstones and slices of cake. But seriously though, when we are talking about investing in gemstones, you really need to pay attention to size for some very important reasons. Usually when we price gemstones, it is a rate, and we multiply that by the carat weight. So obviously the carat weight's important, but much more important than that, when you're investing in gemstones, there's a concept called a magic number. I've also got a companion article about magic numbers on my website, gemshepherd.com. There's a link in the description. But magic numbers are important to keep in mind when buying gemstones and investing in them for the long term. Now, magic numbers are not some weird metaphysical thing. They're solidly grounded in economic principles. If we go back to supply and demand, that's essentially what a magic number is. But how does it apply to gemstones? Magic numbers are basically two things. How much do people want a certain size of gemstone? So size, once again, we go back to carat weight. You can have a stone that looks so big, but because gemstones need to be cut at certain angles in order to get the right size face of the gemstone, you also need a certain depth of the gemstone in order for it to look alive. Otherwise, we get certain cutting defects like window or extinction, and we talked about those in other videos. So if we're going to maintain these proper proportions to have a stone that looks alive and that you're going to love for decades or generations, then we need to be paying attention to magic numbers. A properly cut 5 carat gemstone is going to look amazing, but a poorly cut 3 carat gemstone can have the same face size with nowhere near as much life. That's to do with ideal proportions. So if there's a certain weight that goes along with a certain sized look with ideal proportions, then how is that affected by supply and demand? Well, let's go back to another one of the fundamental questions of life. How big of a rock do you need to propose? Depending on what society you live in and what, dare I say it, levels of society, gonna get burnt crispy for that one. If you bring up the conversation of an engagement ring, typically that's diamonds in North America, right? It doesn't have to be that way, but you know, 120 years of excellent marketing gets you somewhere, right? If you go up to any young lady in the United States and you give them a diamond ring, and if it's got a stone below this size, they're gonna look at you and go, what do you think I am, garbage? So if we understand that ideal proportions are what give us the right look for a stone of a certain size, then that can help us to get an idea of what weight do we need to get a certain look. Because people have gotten used to the idea of a one carat diamond on the hand for an engagement ring. Now it doesn't have to be diamonds, but I'm just saying in North America that's what most people are used to, thanks to 120 years of excellent marketing. Now if you like diamonds, that's fine. It's not my thing, but we'll move on. The same applies for rubies, the same applies for sapphires. When you've seen enough of them, you start to get a feeling of, mm, I like this size, and I think that's an appropriate size for rings, or I think this is an appropriate size for pendants. Once you have seen enough, you start to get that connoisseurship. You get that feeling of, this looks right. Now sure, the way a stone looks with certain carat weights is going to be different for different types of gemstones. A 5 carat emerald and a 5 carat sapphire are two very different sizes. The emerald is going to look almost twice as big. And that's because of specific gravity. But without getting too technical about it, as you see and as you touch these stones, you start to build a feeling of what looks right for what weight. So when you start feeling that, mmm, three, four, and five carats look good, that's, that's the size that I want. Well, chances are that other people in your society feel a very similar way. Aesthetic can be a deeply personal thing, but it's also a cultural thing. So in Asia, you find these tiny little women with huge stones on their hands because that's what they like. And I can guarantee you that when they're competing with their friends, they're also looking for those bigger stones, better colors, better clarity. Those are the criteria that they need. So if they see a three carat stone, which is appropriate for North American rings, they're going to look at it and be like, what, are we peasants? Who is right? Neither of them. And both of them. And I would love to sell both of them stones. But the point of all of this is that the three carat stone that she wants is a magic number, and the 10 carat stone that she wants is also a magic number. Three, four, and five carat stones in certain minerals are magic numbers because so many people want them, particularly in a given market. So if you go around looking for a perfect stone in three, four, and five carat sizes, certain minerals, you're going to have a hard time finding that size because they're constantly going out of stock. They're really popular. Because there's a large amount of demand on that size, that's what makes it a price jump. This is normal economics. But the other thing on top of that is also the rarity factor. Certain stones, you can't find carats above a certain size. Or if you can, they're incredibly rare. So let's take a really common example, peridot. Peridot in small sizes can be really, really, really cheap because peridot, the mineral olivine, is a very common mineral in the earth. 
but what you don't find are large carat sizes. So if you want a one, two, three, four, five carat peridot, it's not going to cost you a ton, especially when you compare it with other stones like the big three, emerald, ruby, sapphire. But if you want to get a peridot that is this big, so you can make a pendant out of it, peridot over about 20 carats are harder to find. So the magic numbers for peridot are going to be different than the magic numbers for sapphire or ruby, which are much more rare. It's harder to find large carat sizes in those minerals. So magic numbers are really just markers of what sizes are in demand and what sizes are rare. So when you're shopping around or investing in gemstones, you wanna take the time to go around and look at what's common, what's available, what's easy to find. And if you're looking for an investment level stone, you wanna find something that's not so easy to find. Sometimes the carat size is a huge cue for that. Finding large carat size stones in certain minerals is difficult. Other times for a given size, you're looking for a certain quality. So if you're investing in mandarin garnets or spessartite, then you can find both large and small stones, but it's very difficult to find the right color with the right clarity. So the magic number, you have to match with a certain clarity point. We're not just gonna say that all three carat spessartines, four or five carat spessartines are at the same price. Absolutely not. You still need to think about color and clarity. But once you have that color and that clarity with this carat size, then you can compare that to other stones of a similar size. And that's how you can get real information on what the price of a stone is. And that's how you invest. You wanna find the best quality you can for the carat size that is appealing to your community and your market. And that's really all that magic numbers are. They're just that economic principle of supply and demand specifically applied to gemstones as a meeting point between how much people like that size of stone in your culture and how rare that size of stone is for its quality. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you've got any questions or would like to source some gemstones, please head on over to gemshepherd.com and you can get in touch with me there. I also have a lot of companion articles and blogs on gemstones and other jewelry related topics. So head on over and check it out. Otherwise, leave me a comment down below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.